Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. This is David Bianco. Today, we've got the recent release from Rhino on the High Fidelity series, the third installment for rock of the Doobie Brothers, Captain and Me. We're going to be pitting that against the Speaker's Corner version that squeaked out a win last time and also the Nautilus Half Speed Master. That's coming up next on our Safe and Sound Texas audio excursion. Well, let me start with packaging because that has been an issue with these Rhino series shipments from the get-go, right? When the first one came out with the cars, a lot of damaged edges, really not put in an LP mailer, um, kind of disappointing from a record company, of course. Uh, and in fact, it was a little better on the Van Morrison release, the second set, but this time it was in a true LP mailer with some edge protection uh, and some gap there between the edge of it and some spacing there. And in fact, the handling of it showed that there was damage to the corners uh, being dropped, thrown, whatever. But in fact, once I did open it, it was totally perfect. So uh, this was an effective mailer. It wasn't the most robust mailer. I only bought one, so it was a fairly thin mailer. But at least uh, at this point for this particular shipment, it seems as if they have been listening and have made an improvement there. So that's a plus right out of the box, literally. So once inside the packaging, we see a similar gatefold with a booklet and a very well-constructed cover and nice clean vinyl in a sleeve that is lined. So what's to complain about? Well, nothing. But what in fact is the audio quality of this versus the previous versions? Now, what I did here is stuck basically with the more audiophile versions of this. I had done a review previously, and I had shown that I thought the speaker's corner of the ones I tried and listened to, including an original promo, turned out to be about the best, and the Nautilus was a little bright for my taste and didn't have quite enough bottom end, although it was a decent pressing in that regard. So now what I've done is gone back and pulled the Nautilus and I pulled the speaker's corner, and now we're pitting it against the Rhino. One change I've had in my system is I have upgraded my cartridges, and I am using an Audio-Technica AT540ML. Now, the ML stands for Microline, which is a type of stylus. Gets a little deeper in the groove, but it's a modified one called a Rigby or a Rigid Body, where the actual top of the cartridge is actually a really light metal composite product that's machined to add more body to the cartridge. And I really like that. Going to do a separate video and give you some examples of that. But in the meantime, on this particular shootout, I brought the Nautilus back in because I wanted to see what differences there were. Now, when you come down to it, these are all excellent pressings in their own way, and they all have advantages and disadvantages. And again, always saying your system and your ears are always going to make a difference. The room that you're in is going to make a difference. So these are, in fact, more or less relative differences that I found between them that I'm going to discuss. So across the board, all three had very quiet vinyl, and I'm rating those a 9 out of 10 for quietness. So that wasn't an issue at all. So again, this is the fact of three very good pressings and having some distinctions between them. And again, we have to think about what is our preference, what do we like to hear, where's the emphasis that we want. And they are very different. There's no doubt about that. 
the Nautilus actually had a little more body to it in some ways and and this dynamic range with this cartridge than on the previous one that I did. So it really moved up a notch in that regard, but it retained some of that brightness. And I don't mean excessive, I just mean it's a little more. And so for me, it's a matter of, do I like that? And it's funny, in this record, there's certain songs it's to the advantage, and other songs it's maybe a little more irritating, depending on the song construct and how much higher end type uh, instrumentation there is in it. I mean, the voices on these three all sound very, very good. But again, they do have a little bit of difference in the way they sound and the texture of the way they sound. Uh, the Rhino being the newest release is one that seems like a bit of a compromise, I would say, on all fronts. Now, ironically, I was wondering, because the Rhino was cut by Kevin Gray now, and he had also cut the Speaker's Corner back in 2007, well, did he follow the same uh, notes? Did he follow the same process? Did he do it totally clean? What happened? And so I actually called Kevin and asked him this. And so he told me very clearly, he said he didn't have any notes on anything he'd done before 2008. So this 2007 work that he had done for Speaker's Corner, he had no notes. So it wasn't like he could start there or intend to be matching it or bettering it or whatever. He was starting from ground zero. And above and beyond that, he doesn't even have a copy of the Speaker's Corner vinyl to play and make a comparison. So this was a green field for him. He started and he did what he thought he needed to do given the equipment that he has. As it relates to equipment, I did ask Kevin about what might be different between 2007 and now. And he said that the cutting electronics were the same. But he had upgraded the console and the tape electronics since then, and the AQ cables were upgraded. And that was all done between 2011 and 2013. He said the only thing that's changed since 2013 is him installing AQ Niagara power conditioners just this year. So that gives you an idea of the equipment changes that have been made. Now, overall, when you look at these ratings and you think about it, again, it doesn't quite give you the characteristics of the sound of the record. That's something that, you know, only you can experience. But again, for, for my money, the Rhino kind of cuts some of the corners in the terms of trying to average things out, I would say, to, to give the best overall sound uh, on par. But really, when you look at the speaker's corner, it certainly has a little more body to it, a little more boom to it. And the Nautilus has a little more dynamic range and high end. But a, the, apart from the fact the high end is better, the fact that the bottom end has some gap really makes that upper end sound a little more bright than it really, really want, I think. And, and for that, for me makes it one that if I really want a crisp sound, there's no doubt that the Nautilus would be the one I would go to. But for just kind of the full experience with the best average of all, the Speaker's Corner is still the one that I would go to. I think the Speaker's Corner comes out right, right next to the Nautilus, but maybe a hair ahead because the Nautilus just has a little bit too much on the top and too little on the bottom. And you don't notice it as much until you make the comparison. And that's always the case. All of these stand strongly on their own in terms of the way they sound. But when you start doing these A-B comparisons, you start to pick up on some of the nuance. So basically, that's what I found out on this. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you would, please subscribe if you haven't already by pressing the bell below. A thumbs up or like is appreciated for the algorithm. And any comments you might have are always welcome. So for now, I thank you for joining me. Catch you next time on our next Safe and Sound audio excursion. Take care, everybody.